Hello Indie Game fans, November's big content patches added more to a number of great games, most of which are roguelites, but there's a nice variety among strategy, simulation, metroidvania and battle royales, all coming up in this video. We'll begin with the gorgeous pixel art roguelite RPG Star Renegades, which got a new character with Enter the Dragoon, another fantastically named update, but unfortunately, no new trailer for this. There's also an update planned for the upcoming winter holidays, so do stay tuned. The multiplayer mini golf title, Golf with Your Friends, has quietly amassed quite the fan base with over 25,000 Steam reviews, where the Deep update added a new underwater course. No fancy trailer for this as well, but the Chinese roguelite tactics title Warriors of the Now put out the Trial of the Gods major update which added the final chapter, new enemies, a new boss and the aforementioned challenge which is supposed to be different from what's in the game so far. Amanita Design is known for their adventure games and they have been making them for a long time since Samurai 2 did recently celebrate its 15th anniversary which is insane for a developer to be around for this long. But it got enhanced with full widescreen support, re-rendered art, re-recorded voice and sound effects and various quality of life improvements and tweaks. So if you have not played this classic but love adventure games, definitely pick this up. One of my favourite Metroidvania titles continues to get bigger and better with the addition of Bloodless as a playable character in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This was previously a boss in the game and as with Zangetsu before, gives you control of the character. I don't think that it really affects the game otherwise in terms of dialogue or new bosses or anything but it's still neat and was a surprise since it was not previously on their roadmap. The self-styled first-person photography adventure set in the crappy future Umarangi generation is quite the interesting exploration title released earlier this year, putting out a paid DLC titled Macro with new locations, new music and new ways to explore. It's also quite a clever title for a game all about photography, so it gets some points for that. Oh, so this is your summer job, huh, Joe? Oh, looks like a lot of, uh, fun. <laughs> development. In one of the most obvious updates, the Battle Royale title Super Animal Royale is now super free with the Super Major update. This is one of the rare indie Battle Royale titles to actually get some traction and is pretty good and worth a play, with this significantly changing the progression system and making it an overall better experience for free players, although they do seem to be modelling after Fortnite with cosmetic customization. Season 2 just started in December, so it's as good a time as any to check this out. Three, two, one, five. I love Robot Wars as a kid, and Main Assembly Bot Brawl looks to be exactly that. I quite like this game since it was a sandbox vehicle building game which had a lot of flexibility and what better way to test the system than to build machines of death and to pit them against each other. 
there hasn't been a great Robot Wars game that I can remember, so this looks to be the next best thing, and if you're not into the robot battling, we cannot be friends. Just kidding. But this update also adds more flexibility in world building and scripting your own levels, adding water simulation and parts, allowing for boats and submarines, and even included a new sandbox map. And if you do love this sort of construction game, what are you waiting for? The awesome one-bit strategy title Death Crown managed to get a little bit of traction, getting enough fans for Demonic Manners to be something viable for them. It's a direct sequel to the main campaign, which adds a whole new faction in Demons, and there's plenty to love, especially the art, although I do understand that it may not be for everyone. Responder, are you ready for two big free updates? Ember is expanding across your city. Now is your time to step up and cash in on the delights of District 2. The satirical first-person shooter Ember, where firefighting has become part of the gig economy, has impressed so far in early access, with the sizzling winter update being somewhat of a two-parter. It adds a new neighbourhood titled District 2, with more challenges, more gadgets and more cosmetics, but the update is somehow split into two with a patch in November and December, but regardless, always a good time to jump in. State-of-the-art systems then level things up. With the Ember's new box box delivery service where every moment counts. Featuring more new toys. Burn up their clutter for more cash. Hey everybody, today we're gonna be taking a look at 0.5.0. .0. Another golf entry gets an update with Golftopia Let's Go Faster. It's a tycoon game that has been drawing comparisons to sim golf with a cool futuristic aesthetic, and this update added skill based routing, new hazards, improvements to the putting green, and so on, with this game getting steady updates and has been shaping up quite nicely. Saturate this thing with rocks and trees and sand traps in order to increase the challenge rating. But what I've done is add modulation detection to it so if i add some bumps and divots and changes to the terrain here these will get picked up and recognized as being challenging so it actually makes it a little bit easier to make this more interesting and should encourage a bit more creativity and you can see it's jumped up quite a bit just by adding a little bit of terrain variation here we'll also add a few sand traps here but nowhere near as much as i normally would have in the past just a little bit to kind of spice things up and freak the gophers out, nothing that's going to get in their way. So the challenge rating has gone up quite a lot. So it's definitely a little bit more freeform now, you can build these however you want. I didn't really get the sense that any of the players were enjoying the putting green, so hopefully these changes encourage people to play around with them a bit more and get a bit more enjoyment out of them. I made some changes to the nature cedar so you can control whether or not it sprays down only bushes or trees. Just gives you a bit more control, and this is something that a lot of people were requesting. I've made a bunch of changes to actually playing on your course, so now you can see the clubs that are recommended are highlighted as such, and clubs that are not recommended are also highlighted as such. So you want to generally try to use the recommended clubs, but there's always clubs that are also valid. So if you look here, the iron is recommended, the wedge still works, but the driver really isn't recommended. So if you're getting greedy trying to hit those long hits, you might get lucky, but take a hard slice into the water. It wasn't recommended, but again, you might get lucky. I've also added some highlights here, so you can tell what objects are obstructing your manager's shot. Just a bit more feedback. So I've made a pretty major behavior change to these angle bumpers, so let's take a look at what the behavior looked like before. So it kind of just shoots off directly away from the thing and it kind of doesn't feel right. So let's take a look at the new behavior. 
So now it's like correctly ricocheting off. Uh, so now you can set up much more predictable reactions this way, and I feel that this is a lot more intuitive. In addition to this, the bump force data had to change, so you're going to notice your bumpers are going to reset to default if you're loading up an old map. Sorry if this messes up some of your courses, but I think this is a good change. So here I've made a hole where I've got three different paths. So I've got a really easy one, an average kind of difficulty one, and a really rough one. And I would like that different skilled golfers go down these different routes. So if I click on these devices here, you can see that I've added a new slider here, which lets you control the type of golfers that can shoot through them. So by default, it's attractive to all golfers, or you can have it only attractive to high skill, medium skill, or low skill. So you basically set up easy, medium, and hard modes for your holes. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Low skill, average skill, high skill. This functionality works with all the devices, but it also works with the golf marker, so you don't have to build crazy devices in order to get this functionality. You can still build a classic multi-path hole if you want. So pretty much everything that had an attractiveness value to it can now be adjusted to cater to golfers with specific skills. I have a feeling people are really going to get a kick out of this, as it allows you to make a multi-path hole where golfers can graduate up to the harder sections as they improve their skills. I've also added a wood decorative set here, so you can see that I've got an arbor, a wooden windmill, and a well flower pot, and it's just more stuff for you to decorate your courses with. I've also added this cool gazebo for your golfers to hang out at, so it's kind of like a bench, but like a super bench, so it seats more people and it's pretty, so you get double duty with the decorative effect. But this could be useful in a high traffic area where you got golfers coming and going all over the place. I've also added this hideous structure here, and rather than describe what it does, I'm just going to show you. So this happens every night, and everyone on the island will see this and get a little bit happier. It also takes the bite out of having to pay daily upkeep. Oh, daily upkeep. Explosions make everything better, though. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the new crazy devices. So I added these little ground pads that can speed the ball along in the direction that they're pointing. Of course, you can rotate them around. And of course, after I added the speed pads, I really couldn't help myself. And of course, devices are best used in combination. So let's take a look at something truly crazy here. Right to the green. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this update. As usual, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that wasn't included in the video, but they're included in the patch notes. So go and take a look at the patch notes if you're interested in the extra stuff. See you next time, everybody. I was pretty surprised to find out that Exit the Gungeon got an update titled Hello to Arms since I always thought of this as a spin-off side thing while the developers were working on something else but the roguelike platformer that's technically the sequel to Enter the Gungeon has been pretty good. This update adds something called Arsenal Mode which messes with your starting gun, hub areas which gives players more choices, a new minigame and more guns and items from the first game which should be crowd pleasers and I do like the parallel that this has to the last Enter the Gungeon update titled A Farewell to Arms so it takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.